My name is Sue Jackson. Um, I am P. Susan Jackson in the literature, um, and I am from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, North America, um, and I run the Daimon Institute, D-A-I-M-O-N, for the Exceptionally and Profoundly Gifted, um, where we do psychotherapy, consulting, um, parent groups, adult groups, we work with children as young as five days old this week, was there with the mama, uh, all the way up to people in their 80s um, from all over the world. Exceptionally and profoundly gifted, um, if we're looking at kids who hit the ceiling on IQ tests where the ceiling might be 145, or they're hitting the ceiling on the subtests in many of the subtests, we know for sure that we can't measure a you know three foot long um, organism with a one foot long ruler. So we know that we're not getting full results from those kids. So those kids that are measuring at that um, level um, have a profound ability for abstraction. They are profound sensitive, they have a associative processing capacity that borders on um, not to be believed. Um, we have an adage about the profoundly gifted, um, we say it's once as a pattern, which is very confusing to everyone else because when they're in a class studying, they will often know what the answer is. One of my favorite girls from China actually was telling me the other day that her computer programming teacher was showing them something and before he had even started to describe it, she had worked it out, had her hand up, and um, off she was with the answer. And this is this profound capacity to um, a process profound cognition and creativity as well. It's not always just the IQ test, I might add. Some of our um, visual artists and some of our kids and some of the other areas may not measure on those IQ tests. And the IQ test may flatten out very complex profiles of profoundly gifted children. So it's to keep in mind not to be narrowed into that psychometric definition of profound giftedness. If you are raising um, exceptionally or profoundly gifted child, I think the number one sort of stance as a parent is to be, is to picture them when they're 25. This is the advice I give. What kind of child do we want at 25? We want a child who has courage, a child who has resiliency, a child who has deep integration of all aspects of who they are, a child who still has their passion and zest for learning so alive. So how do we do that in a system that may not recognize um, who they are in a system where the child may voluntarily or involuntarily just shut down. We look for as many ways to keep them connected and alive in the world. So um, hopefully if, if we can access school programming or online programming um, where the child can, can do very higher level, complex, complex, rigorous, rigorous material, that is very, very important. The rigor is extremely important for this child. Equally, the child needs to be in their body, his or her body. Um, they can't sort of be, as I say to my kids, a head in a jar. Um, the research on anxiety is very, very clear that the more I'm um, aware of even my breath and the more I'm involved with my body, the less I am to sort of fall into anxiety patterns. So, and whatever it is, and believe me, with the profoundly gifted child, it can be anything from, does walking to the mailbox count as cardiovascular exercise suit? To, um, uh, kids who play professional lacrosse or something like that. I have all of those kids in my practice. Um, and to keeping their creative juices alive. Um, wherever we can, as parents of profoundly gifted children, the resources that they're using to do the creating should be the highest level resource. So if, if they're an artist, get the, the best materials that you can. If they're a young scientist, see if you can you know get them actually into a lab where they can have hands-on, where they can have a real-time, real, -time, real problem-solving experience um, and also always remember their children first um, and I would say as a parent um, what are the ways we can set up a context where we're listening to them and they are um, experiencing themselves as a being not as a doing I think that's very very important I am currently working on several books, but the two main ones are Excuse Me, Where Do I Park My Whale? The Extraordinary Journey of the Exceptionally and Profoundly Gifted. And whenever I run that title by a profoundly gifted kid, they just start, they just light up. And they're like, I felt that way my whole life. 
Um, I know personally I felt that way my whole life. I, there's just so much to learn and do and be, and the world almost feels like not quite scaled for who we are. So um, that book hopefully will be out in 2019. I've had a couple little glitches. The second book that I think will be very important to the field more broadly is a book on anxiety um, and how anxiety is often the byproduct of not knowing the deep psychology of the exceptionally profoundly gifted human. Um, and if we understand it, we know how to work with it. Um, anxiety and being profoundly exceptionally gifted do not have to go hand in hand, nor does depression. Um, but we have to know how to, how to work with it. We have to know what the roots of that is.